All right, a little, we're just going to kind of uh, skip around a little bit and talk about different sorts of uh, folk arts and crafts and, and things. And here we're talking about uh, what you might call folk artisans, people who had specific skills that were useful in a community. Some of them uh, were the kinds of skills that you could make a living out of as as the Ozarks started to fill up with settlers, eventually a community was large enough and had enough farmers in it that a person could make a living as a blacksmith. Usually what happened in the first generation of settlement is that there would be a farmer or two who ran their farm but also did blacksmithing on the side. And most farmers, to a certain degree, did basic blacksmithing work. They might not have the whole outfit to be a full-fledged blacksmith. But after a generation or so, most rural communities would have a full-time blacksmith somewhere. And there were all kinds of, all kinds of metal work uh, that needed to be done in the rural Ozarks to keep farmers going, to keep them in business, uh, repairing things, building things. And so there was no shortage of, of work for, uh, for a blacksmith. And that was one of, the, one of the few skills, non-farming skills in the rural Ozarks that made large numbers of people living in the 1800s and first half of the 1900s. If you go look at old census records and you go down the list of people who lived in such and such township in such and such county, they're listed by occupation or that their occupation is listed with their name and uh, lots of blacksmiths in the Ozarks. You rarely ever see somebody in the rural Ozarks in the 19th century or 20th century listed as a potter or, or even a gunsmith or something like that. Could happen, but uh, those kinds of trades and skills were generally practiced by farmers or somebody else who, you know, that wasn't their main line of business. They did that, tended to do, to do that on the side. But you did have people in the Ozarks uh, who, on occasion, who made pottery. Uh, much of the, the pottery that was used in the Ozarks was imported, so uh, there, there weren't potters in every community like there would be a blacksmith in every community. Every, most communities had someone who was at least a decent gunsmith, might not be a professional gunsmith, but someone who uh, knew their way around uh, a gun and could uh, repair and uh, whatever the farmers needed to have repaired. And so uh, gunsmithing was a common uh, trade. Now, basket making was something that was, uh, was not uncommon either in the 19th century Ozarks. And it was one of those trades that became kind of glorified in the 20th century Ozarks. And so uh, you, by the by the mid-20th century, you probably had uh, more people making a living as basket makers than there ever were in the 19th century Ozarks. For the most part, in the 19th century Ozarks, basket makers were farmers who just happened to be good at, at making baskets of different kinds. And, uh, and as we'll see, that kind of changes in the 20th century as baskets, especially white oak baskets, that's the most common kind of, when you think of Ozark basket makers, most of them use uh, strips of white oak uh, to make these very sturdy baskets that they make, uh, like the ones that are pictured here. Uh, these became very, very highly prized items in the 20th century, mainly by urban people who wanted to buy authentic, you know, Ozark made or Appalachian made white oak baskets and would pay uh, pretty good money and certainly by the standards of the Ozarks, it was good money that they could get for these. Uh, this, uh, I believe that these uh, two fellows pictured here are from a, uh, an Arkansas family named Gibson, who were noted uh, white oak basket makers for years and years in northwest Arkansas. One of the interesting white oak basket stories of the Ozarks is a place called Basketville, uh, there was a, a little community called Clementine up in Phelps County, 
Missouri, and Phelps County is where uh, Rolla, Missouri is, and Clementine was uh, west of Rolla. It's just off of I-44 now. Uh, I, I don't think, I don't know that there's a sign or anything up there uh, for Basketville or Clementine or anything like that, but there was this little place at Clementine, and when they, when they built Route 66, which is roughly the old, uh, what I-44 is today, uh, down through there, it went through this little place called Clementine, and there was a family of basket makers who moved up to Clementine from Kabul, Missouri, which is in the southern part of Texas County over in south central Missouri, because they knew there would be a lot of traffic on that road, and they were wanting to sell these baskets that they were making. Well, this little place, Clementine, becomes so associated with Ozark White Oak Baskets that eventually people start calling it Basketville. And that's what it's known as for, for years uh, when, when Route 66 is still going through uh, Basketville. And not only this one family, uh, but uh, I, I think... Uh, well, I can't, I can't think of the family's name. But eventually, there are about three or four different families in this one little community who make white oak baskets and mainly sell them to tourists and travelers coming through town. And they have shops uh, advertising their baskets and all that kind of stuff. And of course, when, when the highway department makes changes to Route 66 and they, they kind of alter the... And, and nowadays, uh, with I-44, it just... It ruins the business there in Basketville, and that kind of brings that little segment of Ozark's history to an end. But it was a good example of an old, old skill that these people's ancestors had brought with them from Virginia or Kentucky or North Carolina, wherever they came from, to the Ozarks, and they were able to, to utilize that skill and find a market for it in the 20th century when... They realized city people would pay money for this stuff we've been, we've been making and, uh, and were able to make a living for a while. One of the families there in Basketville even set up kind of a little, uh, almost like a factory, like a basket-making factory, and didn't, didn't necessarily make them all by hand. They even developed a way to, to something close to mass-produce baskets uh, for the market, and then they would sell them to retailers up and down Route 66. So you can still buy white oak baskets at different places in the Ozarks today. And in the, the little community uh, that I grew up in, one of the last, I guess you would say the last industry we had was a white oak basket maker. And uh, I believe he still makes them every once in a while. He just doesn't have his, his stores not open anymore. But 